Good morning. It is a Monday morning mailbag on a Tuesday afternoon, which has been moved to a Wednesday afternoon because I was flying all day yesterday. I was in Ottawa playing Laugh Lounge, the excellent comedy club in the market. Check it out if you're from Ottawa. I'm now in Halifax. I got shows all week here in Nova Scotia. So I am on um, Atlantic time. Adam's on mountain time. So we had to do some real math here to figure Are you out. Are on uh, one of those half time zones? No, I'm not a half timer. Okay. No, sir. That's Newfoundland only. All right. So we don't have to worry about a cuckoo clock going off in a minute then. No, no, no. Okay, good. Thank God. Nine o'clock, nine o'clock Atlantic, 930 Newfoundland and Labrador. <laughs> not that. No. All right. Okay, so this is what we do every single week. We call them through your interaction. And we released some videos that had plenty of interaction. I know Adam has already come out and said, listen, we'll touch on Votto quickly, but he doesn't want to get into it. The whole public thing, it's just, if he, he already explained himself on Patreon. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so I will Patreon. say this. If you want to hear more thoughts on Joey Votto, we spent probably half hour going yeah. back and forth on Joey Votto. Uh, pretty passionately on Patreon for the mm-hmm. pre-show today. So Patreon got their money's worth today, I think. That's right. Four bucks a month. You get into the Discord. You get MLB Mondays every single week. Little extra content. And then on top of it, if you join one of the upper tiers, you get merch and swag. And of course, we and appreciate Once the season uh, starts again, we are going to be uh, doing our watch parties on Zoom as well. So Yes, we will. Absolutely. It's pretty fun interactive. Couldn't bring myself to set one up for the spring training games. Just couldn't do it. I know we did have a couple of requests. Mish was blowing up our inbox saying, are we going to watch? A... I'm like, no, <laughs> sorry. I just can't. <laughs> uh, I just can't give a shit about this baseball. Oh, it, sorry. And it's so funny because I still every day I turn it on. I'm excited. And by the third inning, I'm like, oh, just give me real baseball. <laughs> but yeah, we're getting I'm... there, folks. We're getting close. We're. We're two and a half weeks away. Very, very close. Uh, to get a hold of us, you can always DM us on Twitter at Walk Off Podcast. You can shoot us a message on Instagram, the Walk Off Podcast. We always comb through the Discord or the Patreon. You get that automatic bump if you're a Patreon member and send us a message. It is an automatic mailbag comment. And then, of course, we go through our YouTube comments and pick what we can. We, if, if by the way, you really want a mailbag and you haven't yet. Just keep trying. DM DMing me is always the best way on Twitter because it does, uh, you know, it, I, I, it's always fresh on the mind, right? I don't have to hunt for it. Anyways, let's get going. After all of the preamble of this intro, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Okay, so we'll start with Joey Votto here. Uh, Jenna yeah. messaged us on Twitter and says, hey, guys, love the show. I was hoping to get this on the mailbag. Joey Votto signing is really cool. But this has to be disappointing uh, for some of these Buffalo guys. Who do you think in the system does this affect the most? You know what's funny, Adam, is that we haven't addressed this already. Like, what a great question, too, because think about the guys in that clubhouse who were excited, probably the majority of them. But if you were a guy who is on the verge of, of making this team. And let's say you play first base. Let's say you're a lefty bat. Spencer Horowitz, like after, after kind of combing through the Buffalo Bison's depth charts, there is no doubt in my mind. Spencer Horowitz is the guy who takes the biggest hit when it comes to Joey Votto signing with the blue Jays, because he is major league ready. He's pretty much proven himself in Buffalo, 26 years old. He has been on the show numerous times, made his major league debut last year, 39 plate appearances. In 39 plate appearances, he put up almost half of a point of war. So like he, you know, like half a game wins above replacement. Pretty impressive for a dude who played something like 15 games. He came up and performed admirably when Vladdy was dealing with some injuries. He came up and performed admirably while Belt was dealing with some injuries. And he is 
so far past what developing in Buffalo can do. I think at this point, he was really a dude that was on the bubble and maybe even a guy who was shopped a little bit by the Jays where they're just like, where does this guy fit? Maybe he doesn't. So if I'm Spencer Horowitz, I'm probably pretty disappointed. Yeah, of course, ball players keep their mouth shut and, and this is all part of the game. And d- does Spencer Horowitz begrudge him? I'm sure he doesn't. I mean, a 21 year veteran, you probably should get a little leeway, but yeah, if I'm picking one guy, Spencer Horowitz is probably the dude. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he's definitely the name uh, of someone who is most affected. I, I guess my next question to that would be, what does this say about the Blue Jays, I don't know, valuation of him that they brought in guys like Vogelbach, Joey Votto. Like, does this, does this say this, we don't so, have confidence in him to be our backup first base depth slash DH or personally, Adam, I don't, I don't view it that way. I think what the truth is about Spencer Horowitz is he's not the type of player that fills the need the Blue Jays had. Horowitz is a hits for average, makes contact, gets on base type of guy. He's not Mm. a power hitter. He's never put up home run numbers. And if you looked at the biggest weaknesses on this Blue Jays team going into 2024, it was pretty obvious they needed a cleanup hitter. They needed a guy who could hit some bombs. Vogelbach really fits that area or that area of need a lot better than Spencer Horowitz did. I mean, Vogelbach's another guy that for sure, when they signed Joey Votto, he had to have been like, good Lord, I'm having such a good spring. This is the worst. Mm-hmm. Like, Because it really does, you know, that bench bat, first base here and there guy, like that's who Joey Votto's position is going to be. And so these are the guys who are going to be affected by it. I mean, the truth is though, man, look at the Yankees. Look at the injuries that they're running into right now they looked like the powerhouse of the al east and now i mean garrett cole just had an mri aaron judge is struggling with health again carlos rodon or uh yeah rodon like you're just like you're like yeah like i don't know man You, you never know with injuries and having too much you know like the old adage is things tend to work themselves out Okay, so, so here, here's my other see. question then. Does Joey Votto stick around in AAA? Like, do you think he's really committed to playing it out in Buffalo at the end of his career and just waiting? Or how does this play out for Joey Votto? Do you think he ever plays a major league game for the Blue Jays? That, I mean, yes. if it's not this year, never, right? So do you think he suits up this year for, for the Jays? Yes, I do. I don't know if he does or not. We'll have to see how, how he's hitting. I mean, I think he's making his Grapefruit League debut on Sunday. Not that spring training stats mean much, but we'll be able to tell if he can hit Major League pitching. So I think still. this is how it plays out with Votto. I think that he is going to be given some runway these last two and a half weeks before spring training. I think he's automatically going to be assigned to Buffalo and he's probably going to give it a solid four weeks in Buffalo and see where he's at. I think this is all going to come down to where Votto's confidence is in himself and where he thinks, if he thinks he can, if he's in Buffalo and he's tearing it up and he just doesn't get a chance to come up, he'll probably bail and sign somewhere else, right? Like if he's, if he's showing that he's a productive bat still and he can't find a way onto this Blue Jays lineup, I think he's gone. I think that if he can't hit, he retires. Yeah. Fair enough. So, you, okay. You think May 1st, he's either yes. on he's the either Blue a Toronto Jays, Blue Jay or he's somewhere or else in the, the bigs, market. or he's retired. So, truly. That's, I, and listen, so, man, so you say, okay, I hold on. Be wrong. Let me just, as clear as I could say this May 1st. Do not buy a ticket to a Buffalo Bison game expecting to see Joey Votto. I would say not. I like that's my I think that's belief fair. anyway. I think that's fair. 
maybe not May for May fifth, May fifteenth, whatever. But I do agree. Yeah, yeah, there is a a certain point in early fall season where he goes, release me so I can go somewhere else, or I'm hanging it up because I don't got it anymore. Or he does got it, and the Jays are like, yeah, come on up. I and that's... I truly do believe the lines of communication with Joey Votto between him and the front office are going to be far more open and they're going to be far more communicative, communicative than let's say the front office with Addison Barger or a Rolvis Martinez mm-hmm. or whatever, right? right. Like I don't think Spencer Hor Yeah, exactly. He's an established mm-hmm. guy. They're going to keep him apprised to where they're at and what they're thinking. I don't think the Jays are going to string Joey along being like, we'll call you up at some point and see Joey in the minors in June. I don't think so. Joey Votto for next manager, the Blue Jays. That's Stubby Clap's job. Stop taking Stubby Clap's job away from him. <laughs> All right. I Let's mean, see. if there's going to be a Canadian guy at the helm of this club, Stubby's Is Joey my Votto dude. Canadian? Oh, yeah, Stubby. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Stubby Clap. Canadian through and through. Got it. All yeah. right. I'm over it. I'm over it. Let's Let's move on. Um, okay. Vogelbach as a, what are we calling him? Power bat. Is that what we're calling him? So he had 13 home runs last season for the Mets in 104 games. Mm -hmm. So that's like a 20 ish home run pace with a 233 batting average. Not his best season. Also, just it wasn't his best season. And just to put a little perspective on it, too, he was very much a bench bat. So even though there's 104 games with his name on the lineup card, he did not take full 104 games at bats. Sure. 319 plate appearances. So let's project that to be a 600 plate appearance full season then. That's like 26 home run pace. But okay. Fair enough. Which would tie Vladdy for the most for the Blue right. Jays last year. Right. Um, so his career best 2019 Seattle as a 26 year old he hit 30 home runs with a 208 batting average. Let's just call this best case scenario. Is that mm-hmm. fair? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For a 31 year old to hit 30 home runs, which is a career best as a 26 year old in his prime. Cause before that it was four home runs in 37 games. Uh, with the Mariners. Um, then the shortened 2020 season, he hit six home runs, uh, nine home runs, playing part-time with the Brewers. Uh, so he's never really shown that 30 home run, we got to get this guy into the lineup ability at the plate other than 2019 as a 26-year-old. So, mm-hmm. 30 home runs and a 2 weight batting average for Mr. Vogelbach. Are you happy with that? Does that keep him on the team? Is that good enough? Like, we talked about Votto and where is he on May 1st. Is Vogelbach a Blue Jay for the whole season? Is that just a for sure thing? Or is he still like a guy trying to prove something and trying to take a spot away from Spencer Horowitz? Because... I think I think he's absolutely still a bubble guy. I think Vogelbach needs to continue to bang like he's showing in spring training to this point. I don't think that there is a placeholder with his name on it. You know, I think that he is very much expendable. And I think he might even make the team and then still be on the bubble for weeks to come as Joey Votto continues to progress in the minors. We'll okay. see. Listen, the, the best thing good, that Vogelbach could do. Go ahead. The best thing Vogelbach could do is come out of spring hot, right? Like if it, his job depends on him hitting home runs in the first three weeks of the season. As well, he's not hitting that's doubles. So unfair. Yeah, he's not hitting doubles or triples. <laughs> yeah, I mean, close your eyes, swing hard, just in case you hit it. Um. Maybe that's how the Blue Jays envision this is through April Vogelbach starts with the Mm -hmm. team. If Votto's blowing it up in triple a, it's an easy switch. Vogelbach is the obvious guy who we're sending down. Unless Vladdy really struggles. (laughs) We're not sending him down. All right. Okay. There you go. Some clarification on how this roster might shake out. Um, a couple of boneheads. 
Good question, Jenna. That was great. That was great. Uh, Robert on Twitter says, good morning, gentlemen. Hoping to get your opinions on the opening day starter. So we just talked about the, mm. the batters and the, the order there. Is Gary Gossman going to be ready? If not Goss, who takes the ball on opening day? So, listen, Kevin Gossman, he had shoulder fatigue. Uh, he had a side session on Tuesday and said he felt good afterwards. So this was yesterday he threw. Blue Jays are just going to see how he feels tomorrow. And if he's ready to throw another bullpen. I mean, the math doesn't look good for Gary Gauze starting this season. That's the truth of the matter. Yep. We're at two and a half weeks out now. I know he came out last week and said he's going to be ready for opening day. But if he's not, he's not. This is a 162-game season, blah, 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 all that rhetoric, blah, blah, blah. Like, you, you want Kevin Gosman healthy, and you want him ready when he's ready. And if it's not going to be until the middle of April, well, guess what? Francis Bowden and... Uh, Chad Dallas gets a, yeah. you know, gets a start until he's ready. Yeah. As for opening day starter, I think if it's not Kevin Gosman, I think it's obviously Jose Barrios. I mean, Barrios is already, he pitched yesterday. He's sort of lined up for that first start of the year. He's hit 65 pitches yesterday, probably up to 75 next start and 85 next start, which lines him up for that 90 to hundred range going into the season, right where they want him to be. He has been an opening day starter before in Toronto and in Minnesota. And he's 29 years old. He's experienced, been there, done that. I think, I think Barrios is the obvious decision there. And then Chris Bassett comes in as your number two. And then you fake Kevin Gosman in once he's ready, which hopefully is only a week. You know, like that's the thing. Three and a half weeks to two and a half weeks. Like it's such a big gap. And so he just misses one start. No big deal. I didn't look at the schedule. There might even be an off date. You might not even need to pitch anyone there. Yeah. Um, I guess the biggest, I don't want to say concern, the biggest indicator will be like, he's still got his pitch in spring training though, right? Like we want to see him pitching in spring training. We don't want to just get to April 1st and be like, all right, he hasn't pitched in a month, but now he's ready. Like he's yeah, still no, you to need to, yeah, yeah, you're going to need to build him up a bit. In fact, we might even see, well, you know, knock on wood, but it's not impossible. Kevin Gosman's first start of the year is in Buffalo and then comes up, you know, because he's got to get his innings up. Yeah. He's got to get his pitch count up. There's no way the Blue Jays are going to put Kevin Gosman out there where he's at around that 60 pitch limit and just let him pitch three innings. I don't think that's the way they wish to go about. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Okay. Uh, Blue Jays start the season with seven games in a row, by the way. So. Okay. Okay. One little interesting piece of information here too. Arden Zwelling, friend of the show, uh, tweeted out, Blue Jays were happy with Yarrell Rodriguez's two inning live bullpen session on Tuesday. Yariel has had a little bit of a, I think they called it an impingement in his shoulder, right? He, you know, these guys, eh, spring training, man, mm -hmm. little, little yep. soreness and all that stuff comes into play and you're trying to ease these guys into where they should be. So Yariel Rodriguez, the Blue Jays, big signee of the off season, 32 million, five years, uh, plan is to build Rodriguez up to five innings by the end of camp. So who knows if they get Yariel up there, it might just be Yariel's start in that Kevin Gosman spot. Not to, not to start the season, by the way. I just mean like you'd move scale everyone up. Jose Barrios starts everyone else under him, and then Yariel would take Kevin Gosman's spot in that number five game of the season until Kev's ready. Okay, good question. Um, broadly speaking, how do you feel about this team? You still feeling good? I I I don't know if I ever felt good. Out there. I I don't know, dude. Honestly, I was I was talking with uh, I'm I'm actually at 
friend, <clears throat> uh, Patreon member here, good buddy of mine, Neil Rhodes' place. Nice. He's put up the the Blue Jays symbol behind us here for for podcasting purposes. He mentioned so, okay. um, but we were talking last night having some beers, <clears throat> and one thing he said was he's like, I can't remember a team where I felt like. They could win 75 games and it wouldn't completely shock you. And they could win 95 games and it wouldn't completely shock you. But most likely it's somewhere in the middle. And hopefully that somewhere in the middle is closer to 90 than it is to 80. And I kind of feel that way too, man. Like that's like, obviously the wheels have fallen off. The, the, the have fallen off and we're dealing with some major injury problems if they win only not 75 games, but there is absolutely a pathway there. And you know what? There is absolutely a pathway to this team winning 95 games, some rebound years from some dudes, some surprise uh, performances out of guys that maybe you didn't see coming, which happens on every team, every single year. And most likely this team is going to be a bubble team, wild card team that wins between 87 and 89 games. That's kind of my view of this team right now. Where are you at, man? Like, are you panicking? I, okay. It's, I mean, all off season, Panic's I've been saying it, word, but. but well, I mean, for me, more than I care about wins and losses this year, I care about Vladdy's performance, Bo's performance, yeah. individual performances. We've got two years left with this group. Real decisions need to be made very soon. And another underwhelming, I don't know if disappointing is quite the right word, but underwhelming season out of Vlad. Like, I just don't know how you give him the kind of money he wants and would still probably get on the open market, right? So if we have an underwhelming season from Vlad, 25 to 30, like under 30 home runs, Mm -hmm. I just don't know how he's a blue Jay in 2026. I don't. Is that crazy? No, I don't know how he's a blue Jay in 2025. They probably move him. Well, that's the thing is if he's not coming back, mm-hmm. we've got real talks happening with them and Votto. There, that's gotta be the thing too. It's like, Hey, if we can't mm-hmm. sign him. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Regardless of how this season plays out, even if he hits 50 home runs, we got to either sign him this off season or trade him. Or trade him. There, yeah, we can't just yeah. take a, a fucking compensatory no. draft pick in return for him no. and Bo, both no. of them. No. Sorry, gone. I think. Unacceptable. It would be malpractice oh, by God. this front office to to just sit on these these guys. They got to either uh, sign yeah. them or move them. So with that in mind then, uh, Blue Jays announced their new slogan for this season. Did you see it? No, I didn't. Uh, so on Blue Jays Twitter, to the fans, to the city, to the nation, we are Blue Jays, hashtag to the core. Yeah. Had a little hype video come up. I hate this, by the way. I think it's yeah. lame for one and lame for two. Um, yeah. So the hype video goes, at our core, who are we? The sum of our parts? We're more than that. There is nobody like us, the narrator in the video states. At our core, we are built to win. Relentless in our pursuit of greatness. Who are we? Blue Jays to the core. So lame for one. Hate it for two. Number three is next year's hashtag moving on. Hashtag rebuilding. Hashtag Phoenix from the ashes. We will rebuild. Like (laughs) I do not Uh. like this slogan. Ugh. Man, I sure hope the Blue Jays come out of the gate hot so we don't have to talk about this in fucking late April. It would sure go a long way. <laughs> oh, my God, man. This is how yeah. the walk-off dies. We just, we're just like mid-season. We're like, we're done. We can't. <laughs> we're, we're not rebuilding. We're not, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm kidding, right. by the way, everybody. <laughs> yeah. This is a threat, Atkins. You either sign Bo long-term yeah. or we're ending the walk-off. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, let's move to the Discord. Uh, Scott, it's syrup season. Adams posted the Keegan Matheson article. 
uh, recently. Which, by the way, our ago. Discord is happening right now. So yeah. if you are a Patreon member and haven't signed up for the Discord or you have not been back to the Discord all winter, because there's a lot of people coming out of hibernation right now, man, it is a buzz and it is a buzz from 6 a.m. Atlantic time to midnight Pacific time because there's just so basically there's no window you can't be talking baseball it's a yep. beautiful thing sorry Adam nice. go ahead no, no it's great great um so the Keegan Matheson article about Tim Mesa called why the Blue Jays think teammate needs a full makeover Trans Am with cigarette hanging out of his mouth pulling up to the field with a neck tattoo. The whole article is just Mesa's teammates taking the piss out of him and Keegs reporting it like it's an important story. It is awesome. I love love it it too. And so I I even thought about pulling some of the things out of the article and I was like, honestly, we're just Just going to give Keegs. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to give Keegs a shout out here. Really well written article. Incredibly funny. And I think Scott Adams puts it just perfectly there when he's like, this is an entire article of his teammates ripping on him and Keegs writing it all out like this is very serious business. It's and great. Uh, yeah, it's it's very funny. So check it out. Friend of the show, Keegan Matheson, MLB.com writer, Blue Jays insider. Great article. Uh, why the Blue Jays think teammates need a full makeover. So give it a read. There you go. All right, sticking with Discord then. Uh, sentimental hygiene says the Yankees traded basically all of their pitching depth for Soto and then lose Cole for the year. Possibly uh, Rodon has been awful again. Esther Cortez has an eight ERA so far and judge is battling injuries. Uh, that deal will end up looking very bad, especially if the Padres get long-term value out of two of those guys. The Soto market always made me nervous. Listen, there was a lot of risk to the Juan Soto trade. The The Yankees really did push their chips in, which was the first time we've seen the New York Yankees do this sort of move in a while now. Listen, they've always been prepared to go out and spend big money. We saw it on Carlos Rodon. They've always gone out at the trade deadline and bolstered their rotation. We saw it with... Uh, I wish to, who's the guy here I'm thinking you. of? You're not I'll helping me. I want to say, this is... I want to say Sonny Gray, but who is the other, the anyways, it doesn't matter. We've seen them bolster their rotation and then it not work out because of injuries and stuff like that. The Yankees do tend to make moves when other teams might be more tentative, but he's right. Like sentimental hygiene. And I know as Jays fans, you're not supposed to hope for injuries you're not and obviously no Jays fan out there is happy that Garrett Cole may need Tommy John surgery and believe me I mean this from the bottom of my heart I hope that his recovery goes well in 2024 uh if that's the case maybe even it goes into 2025 however long Garrett Cole is out I hope that he is healthy and happy uh until he returns to the field Look, what do we always say here? We say, I don't want to beat the Yankees because they're injured. I want to beat them because they're healthy and they suck. Yes. Unless yes. they're better than us. Then I hope they're injured. Then, that we beat then I them. hope they're injured. Yes. Right. That so, old I'll take The same. old hashtag, we are Blue Jays to the core. Hashtag, I'll take what we can get. <laughs> uh, just the tale as old as time. Yes. So... Yeah, I mean, there's examples of this throughout baseball. This is the thing with injuries, right? Look at the Jared Kellenic trade with the Braves. the Braves, right? Like the two top prospects, pitching prospects, that the Braves sent to the Mariners. And this is just, this is the baseball gods just frowning and making it rain on you. But both of them <laughs> need Tommy John surgery and are out until at least mid-2025. Like, and that's the thing with prospects, man, like, if you get a Tommy John surgery and you haven't even cracked the big leagues yet, like you don't know, like look at, look at the amount of pitchers that you can name where injury has just been their downfall. Hell, we have one on this team right now in Nate Pearson. Remember when he was going to be a hall of famer only three years ago, like lost his 300 batting average. And now he's out. <laughs> so 
I give the Yankees credit for pulling the trigger on that trade because Juan Soto is a huge difference maker and they really were looking at the landscape and being like, without a doubt, this is the guy we can add that does the most to improve this team. And there's something to be said for a front office prepared to do that. But yeah, for this to just go sideways on them, you know, if, if Garrett Cole, the ace of their staff, the ace of the American League, winds up being out for the whole season and Carlos Rodon doesn't rebound like they're hoping he does. And Nestor Cortez continues to struggle and doesn't show what we saw out of him in 2022. And you don't have Aaron Judge in the lineup protecting Juan Soto like you thought he'd be in the lineup. And Anthony Rizzo takes another elbow to the head in some freak accident. And all of a sudden, his concussion problems are undiagnosed again by the crack medical squad of the Yankees. Like, literally, there's a lot of things that could go wrong here and go sideways. And to watch it start to happen in spring training, like, yeah, Yankees fans are losing their mind. And this is why there's rumors out there. Bob Nightingale just yesterday put out that the Yankees were restarting negotiations with the Chicago White Sox for Dylan Cease, right? All of a sudden, Blake Snell being like, I want to go to the Angels. Now he's shut up. You, you, you're you not hearing anything out of Blake Snell now about where he wants to go. <laughs> as, as they're going, circling back to the Yankees. You know Scott Boris is right there, right? I mean, he's Juan Soto's agent, so he's like, hey, like, yeah, I uh, oh, I think the two closest things I'll be watching this April will be hopefully watching Vlad come out strong, and then equally as important to me is that Juan Soto struggles, and I hope the Yankees boo the living snot out of him. And I hope he realizes this sucks. New York's not for him. New York, the fans are shitty. I don't want to be here for the next 10 years. This is no. shitty. I want to be a Blue Jay hashtag to the core, baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to make this hashtag work. It's not working for me. All right. That's good stuff. Uh, let's end with these last two here from the Discord. Uh, no, from the Patreon. Uh, Mark has a merch idea. Since we're getting all these mug requests, another idea should be pint glasses. I'd be happy into, to... Ugh, can't talk. I'd be happy to enjoy a cold one in a walk-off beer glass. I mean, mugs and glasses, this is your wheelhouse, buddy. And we we should figure this out because I, I know I mentioned it last show, but uh, I get so many messages about those mugs, dude, like to a point where I'm like, this is annoying that we don't have mugs to sell. And so Yeah, we could probably get we, that we, set up. We, sure. Yeah, we got to look, look into Thank that. Absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll design the beer glass. You design the water bong. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag to the core <laughs> hashtag to the core all right uh it does have a question you're not, attached to the core. To you're not to the core unless you live hardcore right <laughs> yes. uh, what is that wild hogs no that's tenacious d <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 tenacious d uh, by the and way, the legend of the rent was way hardcore. Yes. <laughs> uh, by the way, your mention on the episode you did by yourself last week of Tenacious yeah. D's cover of that Britney Spears song. Yeah. I went and looked it up and that was definitely worth looking up. So thank you for that. Yeah. That Just great. their beards blowing oh, in the yeah. wind. I don't know what it is about a man's beard blowing in the wind, but I'm like, that's cool. That's just cool. Yeah. Do you <laughs> To the core. Hashtag to the core. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you like the feeling of your beard blowing in the wind or is yours not quite long enough? Hate it. No, yeah. I, I can feel it. I, I don't like it. Okay. I prefer a nice tight. <laughs> I don't like it either. But I, you know what I love is when I'm in a pool and I can feel it in the water getting tugged. Oh, yeah, I'm me like too. Wading me too. back and forth in the water. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. I just, I get right in my vibe when I'm feeling that. So. Yeah, <laughs> my daughter's no. like, "What are you doing, Dad?" 
Uh, you're like, Shh. I'm having a moment. <laughs> um, don't have a moment at a public pool. Okay. Uh, Mark's question was, why is the pitching distance 60 feet, six inches? Where'd the extra six inches come from? Base paths are 90 feet. So I could see someone being like, oh yeah, let's throw from two thirds of that. And then there was just one guy that was like, nope, too close. Back it up just a little bit. Do you know? Mm -hmm. What's the history of Uh, 60 feet, six inches? Well, I think they were going to make it 60 feet. And then who is the guy? Average size Allen was like, well, let's just add whatever length my dick is. And then it was just 60 feet, six inches. All right. Sorry, guys. We'll cut that. (laughs) I have no idea, actually, as to the reasoning behind it. Um, It is a game of inches, though, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, this is a a great piece of homework. Um, I'm on the history of the pitcher's mound dot com. Uh, 1845, the rules regarding the area for a pitcher to throw were very limited. In fact, the only regulation was that they had to stand 45 feet from home base. At that time, baseball was truly considered a batter's game and pitchers were not viewed as very important to the team's success. Uh, 1864. um, Complaints led to more rules for the pitcher's mound. Um, Many said pitchers were cheating to make the ball unhittable. Therefore, a 3 foot by 12 foot pitcher's box was established where the pitcher had to remain while they pitched Um, pitchers were also now required to have both feet on the floor while pitching uh, without running or or just throwing the ball as fast as possible Uh, during this time the pitching box was moved to 50 feet from the home plate five further than before yeah in 1893 uh, following a pattern of early modern baseball switching between pitcher and batter dominated, more rules were established to redistribute a balance between pitcher and hitter. So 1893, in order to increase movement and aid the pitcher, the pitching the previous pitching box was replaced by a mound with a slab on top. The new raised pitching position was increased to 60 feet, 6 inches. So that might just be... I have to do the math on that quick. 50 feet. Maybe that was like the midpoint of where their old box was. But it doesn't okay. doesn't have a reason as to why it was 60 feet 6 inches. Just that 1893 they, have in there, they made a mound. Do they have in there when they raised the mound up? When was that? The 60s? You... Yes, 1968 was known as the year of the pitcher, mainly because the number of runs had dropped, blah, blah, blah. The MLB, ooh, no, sorry, MLB. Let's get that correct before the comment trolls come out. Uh, changed the height requirement for the pitching mound to 10 inches. To right. this day, height and distance of the pitcher's mound have not changed, establishing the perfect ratio of runs per game to maintain the thrill and entertainment of the audience. Ooh, this must be an old article. Um, anyways, there you go. So I don't, uh, it doesn't have a why 60 feet, six inches was selected. I don't know. They, it probably just visually looked like a good spot on the mound. And then what they measured it after the fact, I bet, you know, a lot of that stuff happens where they're just like, here's where we pitch from. And then someone was like, well, we should measure it. So everybody pitches from there. And then they're like, okay, measure it. And it was like turned out to be 60 foot six inches i'm just guessing i don't know anyways if you in the comment section know why it is 60 feet six inches uh let us know or better yet Mm -hmm. if you don't know do the homework make it find out yeah (laughs) i was was gonna say find out and then let us know yeah make it up we will also uh for next week's mailbag read all the best reasons why it's 60 feet six inches made up or otherwise Made up or otherwise, we'll we'll put it out there like this is a hundred percent. We'll do a Keegan verified. Matheson article on it. Yeah, that's we'll, pretend, <laughs> we'll report on it like it's very serious. 
Yeah. Okay. Last one here. Let's get out of here. From Wyatt says, hey, fellas, question for the mailbag. John Heyman reported that J.D. Davis would be a good fit for the Jays after he was placed on waivers from the Giants at $6.9 million for his last year of arbitration. My question is, after looking at his stats, why would San Francisco sign Chapman to a potential one-year deal and give up a draft pick when they already had a third baseman uh, for one more year at $13 million less than what they ended up paying Matt Chapman? I mean, the easy answer is the Giants organization did their homework and felt that the Matt Chapman Matt Chapman at third base was worth $13 million more dollars and better for the team. I mean, you look at J.D. Davis and all this talk of him coming to the Blue Jays, and I don't know if he's better than the options they already have vying for the spot. And this is one thing I was going to ask you, Adam. Like, when you take a look at his numbers, right, he had a wins above replacement just under one last year. He had just under 500 at-bats, uh, 119 hits, a batting average of just under 250, 18 home runs. Like, pretty comparable numbers to Matt Chapman outside of Matt Chapman being worth two and a half more wins above replacement than he was because of the value he adds defensively. I don't know, man. Would you, honest, honest, honest opinion, just when you first hear it, the Jays go out and sign J.D. Davis, does that make you happy at all? Not even a little bit. Yeah. Like, uh, I think I'd first... rather them give Ernie Clement a shot, in all honesty. The kid is absolutely lighting it up right now. He's got no option, so if he doesn't make the team, he's going to be sent back. Uh, he's going to hit waivers pretty much. And someone's going to claim him. In fact, I read an article from Ben Nicholson Smith where he was talking about the fact that he had just talked to some scouts from other organizations who mentioned Ernie Clement. This is a 27 year old guy who's been around the league for a little while now, had a really good um, stretch with the Jays last year between him and Horowitz and, and, Schneider, they basically saved the Blue Jays season there in August when there were injuries going on. So I look at like I look at Ernie Clement and David Schneider and where these guys are just on the bubble and might need to go back to AAA. And I'm like, is JD Davis an upgrade over these guys? If so, it's marginal, man. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh it doesn't excite me at all. Um, the first, first place I heard about the Jays being after him was, uh, Jays Digest actually on YouTube. They were pretty keen on the idea. So I was like, I didn't know much about JD Davis. So I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting. I still don't feel like just on the, like the premise of it of, Hey, we're all disappointed in Matt Chapman. So let's get the guy who another team thought was worse than Matt Chapman and didn't want anymore. That yeah. alone is enough reason for me to like not like it just as an idea. Offensively, his numbers aren't like good. They're not mm -hmm. bad. He's not bad. He's just he's just an average everyday guy, and I think there's plenty of that with maybe more upside already in the J system. I, I don't know. The the grounds crew, say, speak up here. Like, leave a comment because I'd love to hear what you folks think. The best thing I can say about J.D. Davis. So, in 2019, coincidentally, the best season of Vogelbach was also the best season of J.D. Davis. Was that the juice ball season? Um, it was the juice ball season, actually. It literally was the juice ball season. Funny. But anyways. That's funny. Uh, so, he hit 307 that year with 22 home runs. That might have also been Matt Chapman's best season. Um, let me just double check this. Matt Chapman in 2019 had numbers that looked like sixth in MVP votes, 249 batting yeah. average, 36 home runs. So, yeah, 2019. Almost more give of an anomaly little, than 2020 give those was. balls a little juice. Yes. 
You know, like you're gonna see guys like Vogelbach and Chapman being like, "We just, love juice balls." I gotta just start looking at 2019 as a write-off. Like when I'm looking at people's career numbers, I already look at 2020 as like that doesn't really count. Yeah, like if they had an OPS of a thousand that season and every other season was like 785. I'm like, yeah, like okay, what have you been 785 by the end of this thing? Yeah, I'm exactly. like, he played 60 games. He had two good months. Okay. But I think I need to start looking at 2019 with the same kind of a, yeah, Matt Chapman hit 36 bombs in 2019, but so did like everybody, you know, that was not, I don't know. I, I, I genuinely think I got to start calibrating my interpretation of what 2019 looks like on the, on a guy's baseball card. Um, anyways, JD Davis had a good 2019. Um, otherwise the second half of 2022, the numbers were also pretty good when he got traded from the Mets to the giants, um, 49 games, eight home runs, an OPS of 857. So an OPS plus of 142 jumps off at you as like, Oh wow, that's pretty good. That's like, Joey Votto's career OPS. Anyways. It's good, but again, it's only 49 games. And then mm-hmm. when you look at like, well, how big of a sample size is 49 games? Matt Chapman's first 49 games last season, he hit 301 with an OPS of 895. That's like exactly the point is that, yeah, yeah you can be really good for a month and a half. Yeah. It, so yeah, JD Davis. Most big leaguers are. Most big leaguers are in the big leagues because they can string together five good weeks. Yeah, well, if they can't, they get cut, right? They get sent back down. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, JD Davis does not do it for me at all, and I think he made a great point. Give me, like, give me a guy like Ernie Clement to just run out there for essentially. Maybe he's not as good as JD Davis, but like, let's find out. But and again, if he's not, I feel like it's marginal, right? Like I, right? Yeah. I, I, I where I don't are see we JD as Davis team? signing with the Yankees, putting up a thirty-five home run season, and we're sitting there with Ernie Clement going, "Oh, if only we had gotten JD Davis." I was just gonna say that I'm like, what kind of organization is this, and how deep are we in the mud if we're looking at each other in June and we're just like, "Dear God, what we would give for JD Davis?" Like, <laughs> man, things are not good. <laughs> give me give me back Paul DeYoung and JD Davis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh... Uh, grounds crew would love to hear your thoughts on adding JD Davis, where you folks are at on that. And if we're missing something on the positive side, where maybe JD would offer an aspect and fill a hole for the Blue Jays that they desperately need filled that we just missed. Uh, always appreciate all the interaction folks and just you folks in general. Honestly, I, I did shows in Ottawa and I had, uh, almost a full dozen different people come up to me afterwards who are listeners of the walk off and, uh, said very nice okay. things at him. I had two different people. I mentioned this to you on MLB Mondays, mm-hmm. but we'll get it out there to the public. People miss your mullet. I know your wife doesn't, but people miss your mullet. Maybe, <laughs> you're like, I'm, I'm, you're like, I'm. <laughs> I, I I might do mustache for April first. Mm. Tell you what, you've got that big, thick upper lip too, buddy. Like you grow such I a know. badass mustache. Oh, it comes in <laughs> good. Here's the thing. Okay, my daughter is in playoffs for hockey right now. She's in the final game of their like round robin for playoffs, and she's her team is tied for not quite a spot in the semifinals. If they win on Thursday, so tomorrow, if they win by four goals. They're into the semifinals. If they win by three goals or less or tie or lose, season's over. So right. I've been hammering her all week. I'm like, you've got to run up the score on this poor team that we're playing. Like, we've got to put the gears yeah. to them. Anything can happen. It's tier six hockey, right? Like, some kid doesn't get a good night's sleep, and all of a sudden, you're like, holy fuck, yeah. we're blowing the doors off the roof. Um, yeah. Kids are cranky and fighting on the bench. That's right. all good for Team right. Lily. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so, if that's the case, and we advance, I can't shave my beard off because it's playoff beard. Of at course. This point, those are the rules. If you see me on Friday with a mustache, it means we lost or we won by less than four. Unfortunately, it's a so. post. It's a post mortem for your daughter's hockey team. 
<laughs> can I say can I say this? This is terrible. The last game we played on Sunday was against like the top team in our grouping. And we were down five to two when we ended up coming back and tying seven seven. So like if we had a loss, we would have been out of contention. Tomorrow's game wouldn't have mattered. So the tie was a big thing. But they had one kid on their team who was like their whole team. Cause that's usually what it is at tier six is like everyone stinks. One kid knows how to stick handle and he just scores 12 goals a game. Right. Right. Um, anyways, he was just like dangling through everybody and whatever. And I, I told her, cause I'm in the score clock and her bench is right, right next to mine. I'm like one five, like you've got to, this is their whole team. Like, you've got to stop this kid. You can't keep letting them blow by you guys. Like you gotta, you know, play the body a little bit. And uh, anyways, there was a point in like the second period where he was cutting back basically across the blue line and she had him lined up so good. Like he was, he probably would have been in the hospital if she had to hit him and he just got out of the way. I'm not saying like, I'm, I wish she had to hit him and wrecked his career. Or yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. But like, it sent he, a message. He, yeah. It sent a message. Cause he like, he saw it. He had his head down. Cause you, you have your head down when you're 12 and stick handling. Right. And he like just you're looked up at the baby. right <laughs> second and just dodged it. But like she clipped him and he was not dangling through the team. He for was the rest not the, of the same game. the rest of the game. And I was just like, love it. Could never public. Uh, here I am publicly uh, cheering this on. I'm glad yeah. she didn't hit him and that he wasn't hurt. Mm -hmm. And I would have had to like scold her a little bit for whatever. But like I'm always on her. I'm like, don't slash kids. Like you can't be out there slash. They break someone's wrist or their ankles. You can't do that. Yeah. I'm like, good. Like shoulder to shoulder. Like rub them out against the boards. Right. Yeah. Like just yeah. You don't want to hurt the kid, but you got to let them know. Like hey, you're gonna have to work for it. Right. Yes. And she just put a little bit of a fear of God in his eyes and he wasn't the same for the rest of the game. So a little bit of a proud dad moment. If that makes me a bad person, I'll own it. But I was like, hey. that's my girl. She went for it. So, I mean, to the core, it would have absolutely been a penalty because it's non-contact in this league. Like, yeah. whatever. So it would oh, have no, been a I body check. I penalty. get it. But yeah. it wasn't like a dirty, like elbow to the head or like from behind, like, right. You know, but a gentle pick, right? Like if <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So anyways, it's just yeah, having kids is fun and watching them play sports is fun and I'm entertained by it. So, well, I yeah. hope she wins, buddy. And if so we too. see a mustache on you in Friday on Friday, we'll know that, uh, that's not the case. <laughs> if not, we're only one more week away. So anybody that wants to see that yeah. mustache, wait one more week regardless, and it'll be here. Maybe. I still don't know if I'm going to do it, but we might. Okay. And on that, here. we'll call it. Big tip of the hat, everyone. Thank you so much. Without you, the grounds crew, we would be just talking to Adam's dad and my dad and his brother <laughs> and my brothers. So thank you. <laughs> um, All the best, gang. Patreon, stick around because, well, I mean, not stick around, but when you see this, we yeah. are going to have the second episode coming out later today, which is the baseball TV show episode. So Around you and I are one, sitting yeah. down with Joel in like 15 minutes for that. So anyways, if yeah. you're on Patreon and you finish watching this, keep an eye out for your notifications because a couple hours down the road, you'll have something else. So there you go. Okay. That's it. Let's get out of here. Cheers. Cheers gang. <laughs>